after the program uh, on Tuesday night, a number of serious questions need to be answered. And we have been saying for quite a while, as one of the most active groups within the victim sector, especially within the unionist community, that there is too much money going to the wrong places. There's money going into organisations that have very few people and certainly very few victims within them, but the money seems to flow freely. Now, I find myself in a peculiar position where Sinn Féin have put out a statement here and I actually have to agree with the majority of what they have said. But the one thing that I will say, fair have got no political cover by anybody. From our problems started, and they were started not because there were financial problems, but because they said there were procurement problems. Now, we've continually argued that there's money going into organisations that have no victims, or very few victims. And Sinn Féin's right here. Is there political cover for organisations because they're saying the right things? They're going along the right path. Like we see the individual from Saver Never here being invited to an event where there was only 60 people from Northern Ireland asked to it, but there was nobody from Fair invited to Stormont because we were not prepared to sell out our principles, never have and never will. Money is not our master. Never was and never will be. And you only have to look at the amount of compensation that people got within fair. Like my family, for a start off, when the bombs went off and the shootings, we never claimed a penny. Not a penny did we take from our government because we believed that we needed to support the government. Because the IRS policy was to financially bankrupt the United Kingdom. That's what they set out to do. These things do need to be dealt with and they do sorry, they do need to look at a situation where if they're putting so much money into an organization, what are they getting in return for that? We have continually asked that that was looked at and that has continually been torn down because people were unfair. The committee, there's 13, 14 people on the committee who give up their time voluntary, sometimes two, three nights a week, and even at weekends. The workers within the organisation are working anywhere from 40 to 100 hours a week. Well, at the minute, we haven't got any workers. We have two, but that's besides the point. We, at the start of this whole thing to do with investigations, we went to the funders and invited them, invited them to come up and get through everything within this organisation, which they did do. We left nothing that they could not look at. Now, we have none to hide. Okay, there may be an odd mistake here or there. The first one's put our hands up to that. But whenever you look at what went on within the Republican organisations for years, and especially the prisoners' organisations, who nobody is prepared to look at because it would upset the peace process, we continually told the funders that there were certain things needed to be done, that organisations needed certain things in place to help them run properly and for to oversee the distributing of money. They didn't do it. And one of the reasons why they didn't do it, they didn't want organisations within the unionist community to function properly. We went to them, asked them to come in and go through the organisation, but also to look at the amount of work that the organisation has carried out, because it far outweighs the amount of funding that was given to the organisation in the first place. But no, they didn't want to do that. But they've looked and they've come back and they've looked and they've come back and they've looked and they've come back and they've looked and as of yet they have found nothing. There's no politician standing up 
are very few standing up for fair and fighting our corner, even though we have thousands of victims, not 50 or 60, or indeed if in few cases maybe a hundred within an organisation. We have thousands of victims, but there's nobody standing up and fighting in our corner. Why? Because we won't be bought. We want peace, we want a genuine peace, but it has to be a genuine peace. People like Francie Malloy have to give up the right that they believe they have, and that is to mow their people from within the unionist camp, or indeed from within the nationalist camp, that don't agree with them. The Shinners still hold the right. They still believe that they have the right to mow their people within any political camp if it would better or forward the agenda of United Ireland. They will tell you they're on a democratic path at the minute. There's a big difference from being on a democratic path and holding a right that you believe you have in the name of United Ireland and that is to go out and murder and maim people if things don't go your way. So we'll take no lessons from Francie Malloy, but in principle what they have said is right. People do have to be held to account. And if there's people covering up here for certain individuals because they were saying the right things, they have to be held to account. And the funding, as far as we're concerned, especially the European funding, is a farce. It is geared towards nothing more than creating uh, an agenda, let's say, whereby they can say they've done cross-community because you can sit down with the people who butchered you. If we're prepared to sit down with the people who murdered us, we would get all the fun that was going. We could have Pearl's Pantry. We could have all these other organisations as well. But we're not prepared to do that, because we will not sell out our loved ones. Beyond the no illusion, the offers have been made to Willie Fraser, and the offers have been made to Fair if they were to change their agenda and give up their principles. Them offers have been made. We have not accepted them. A lot of other people have accepted them and quite happily are getting money coming out of their ears. We're not and never have been. The amount of money we have got in the past comes nowhere near justifying the overwhelming amount of work that has been done by the organisation. The person on the programme the other night in Saver Neighbour locked the door while she was a member of FAIR and refused to let the DUP in through the door. Uh, people have to ask the reason why this person uh, broke away from FAIR and got the funding to buy a property 50 feet away from where we were based. And we have been up and running for about three years at this stage. But this individual broke away before an AGM could be held. And then got funded to buy a property 50 feet away from us. Anybody that knows anything about funding knows that that does not happen. Under normal circumstances, that does not happen. So Francie Malay wants to start... Uh, in his investigation. They need to start there. They need to start at the very start of how this whole thing came about. How did this organisation get funded in the same town as an organisation that was already up and going and had hundreds at that stage of victims? Now, there's a lot of good victims within Saver Neighbour, a lot of genuine people, but unfortunately there's a lot of people also whose agenda was no more than glory for themselves. I'd ask people to take the time and study this. Because people think, oh, there's a pile of money that went to the victims. There's no pile of money that went to the victims. Compared to the prisoner organisations, we got the crumbs. We got what was left behind. And whenever you break it down and look at the consultants that got the money, Look at these organisations that were set up to do the training, the amount of money they made out of it. You'll see the victims got very little, and especially, especially the victims within FAIR, because we were not prepared to sit with the perpetrators. We were hammered 
every time. In her applications, and we can show it in black and white, where the funders have said, oh, these people are not prepared to sit with the Republicans. Application torn down. Well, they could keep their money, as far as we were concerned. And we are demanding, demanding that these people come forward now that are supposed to be investigating fair. And let's have the discussion, let's have the points put on the table. And let's see who's right and who's wrong. And I'll tell you this, government bodies have got procurement wrong. People need to understand what procurement is. Procurement is when you tender for organisations to come in and do work for your particular organisation. We're talking about consultants. We're talking about groups that does training. We're not talking about victims getting money. We're talking about professional bodies getting money. That's what they're talking about. What we're supposed to have done wrong is we didn't tender properly for these organisations. Well, it was no benefit to fair, no matter who got it. And that's the problem. The money shouldn't have been put out there in the first place for these organisations. Thousands and thousands of pounds to do a small bit of work. Was just One organisation was 20 odd thousand pounds to do a report. 20 thousand pounds to do a report. It's utter and total madness, the money that's been wasted.